I haven't played with clay for a minute, so let's do that today. Welcome back class. Hey guys, Mr. G here. Today we're going over a clay project. We're gonna be using coils to make a simple design, giving ourselves a little bit of a 2D perspective in a 3D format. Sounds really weird, so let's dive into it. Last week or the week before, whichever guy, uh, I'm gonna put the video up here. Now, all these project ideas that I have, most of the time, I'll be honest, I get them off of Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook. I see something cool or something that I can modify to make more of my own. I'm definitely gonna do that, but if I'm just straight up grabbing it from somebody else, I'm gonna go ahead and give them some credit. So, uh, today's project, Miser Suri's Art. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. So, straight up, uh, go check out um, Miser Shuri's Art on Instagram. I think that's right. So this is a picture with that that I got. Looking at this picture, I saw this, I was like, I could totally use a project like that. And I totally love to get that project out to you guys because the more we know, the more we learn. Now for this project, I'm using clay in the classroom. So I decided to make a clay tile. And for this, I'm using a letter design for the middle. Last time I used a, um, I was doing a bear design. I did that one out of paper. Now, for these designs, if you're going to do an animal, I recommend looking up tribal animals because it gives you a nice, thick, black line to work as the as the outline of the overall image, and that's just easier to work with. Uh, for uh, elementary, middle school, or VA1, Visual Art 1, uh, I would recommend doing a letter design if you're doing that in clay, just because this is gonna be something that's uh, relatively easy and something that all kids are gonna feel successful in. So definitely kind of, this would be a beginner's project. Step one for this project, you're gonna roll out a slab of clay. That's a given. After we take our slab of clay, I'm gonna use a sponge, try and smooth out that, um, you definitely wanna smooth out the, the texture there because the mats is just, it, it looks better when you smooth it out. Two, I'm, I'm gonna draw a quick design out there of my G, which is the, you know, my symbol that I use. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and start rolling out my coils. Now for these coils that I'm using, you know, wanna make them the average thickness, which for me is about the width of your pinky nail. That's the one that, that I tell my students, you want about that thin. Uh, it's a nice, consistent thickness that, that works well for the whole piece. Using a, I'm using the palette knife there to cut all my pieces up. You can use a fettling knife. Um, there's several clay tools to use. I just use that one because I think it makes a nice clean cut for all the pieces I'm using. Uh, after I've cut the piece out and thrown down the G, putting some slip on top of it just to ensure that everything is, all the gaps are filled in to make sure that nothing goes wrong in the firing process. That's one thing that I definitely want to make the, a hammer in there for you guys. When you draw this out, uh, if it's the same day clay, typically I tell my students, you don't have to use slip because it's both sections of the clay then have the same water amount. So you don't really need the slip then. It's just gonna make things take longer to dry. For this kind of project, you definitely need to use slip because when you've carved out those designs, you wanna make sure that you're filling in all of those gaps again with some other clay to make sure that all those pieces are bound together. If you have a little bit of a space, if you have a little bit of space under there and you put the clay on top, that empty chamber right there is not gonna dry at the same rate that everything else dries. And that could cause things to crack, blow up, um, just not work in the drying process or in the firing process. So using the little slip just gives you an insurance into making sure that everything's gonna fire properly. Now, once I've got my G knocked out, smoothed out those, those lines of all the different pieces I had to use to make the piece together. I'm gonna roll out several more coils to go ahead and start working on the background design. Now for the background design, you guys can come up with whatever you guys wanna figure out to make it. Uh, for me, I use like a herringbone kind of style around the outside. So I made these little nuggets of clay coils that I'm just putting around in a herringbone format. Now to do the herringbone format, you're gonna start off with that zigzag pattern where it's kind of like making a T and then you keep adding to the T all the way across to build out the rest of the piece. And you can see me kind of working on that here. But at the same time, I'm going by the seat of my pants because you know that's how we like to, that's how I like to work. I experiment. I want to see how things happen. If it doesn't work, I'll just start over. It's not a big deal to me. And I'd rather test something and see why it went wrong. So when my students run into those issues, I have already lived through that experience. And I can say, this is why this didn't 
didn't work out. And a student is always more is always better off getting an answer as to why something does, doesn't work than somebody just saying, oh, it doesn't work or, or you could do better or you could expand upon that. I'm giving them reason and rationale into why stuff fails because I have failures. I want my students to see my failures at the same time because then we're all learning together. We all see that we're all people, we're all humans, we're all making mistakes. And that's great because it's just another part of the learning process. For these herringbone designs, as I'm adding the pieces in, I'm definitely seeing many gaps throughout the whole piece. So you can see that on the side in between the chunk of clay and my board, I've got these little, um, basically it looks like rabbit poops where I've just thrown off these little bits of clay. I'm just going to grab those, push them into the spaces that are open. And I just want to make sure that I'm turning in the right form so that it looks like it's either a horizontal line or a vertical line, whichever piece it needs to play. Now, as I'm adding these in, you can see that I'm constantly adding slip to the board. Uh, you, again, you want to make sure that you're adding enough contact air, contact slip to go between the base tile and the coils that I'm working on. And as I'm adding those pieces in, I'm ensuring that everything's kind of smoothed out together. Really, these pieces just need to be pressed firmly enough together and they'll work. Uh, so when it fires and it comes out of the kiln, I'll have a nice surface quality. that's going to be similar to the streets of London, where it's that, that cobblestone look to it, which I think for me will actually come, come out better. Again, the colors I use a lot, I use a lot of like a dark burgundy, blood red blacks, whites, that's my color scheme. That's just what I do. So with knowing that, having that surface quality looking like the cobblestone, I can then give it a patina look. I can come back with uh, spray paint. I can come back with a glaze application. I can come back with under glaze and then not do a gloss cover on top of it. I've got options to play with. And one of those things that I stress all of my students is give yourself those options. You might cut, put this in on Tuesday thinking this is how I want to design it, how I want to decorate it. Friday it comes out, it's Friday, completely different mindset. Use that to your benefit. Don't let that kind of isolate you and like I can only paint it this way because this is, no, don't put yourself in that position. Give yourself options. Options are always better. Once I finish it up, just cleaning up the rest of the rest of the tile, just cutting out um, the top, bottom and sides to make it a nice clean finish and I'm good to go. Simple project. I like that. Awesome, guys. I hope that you guys got something fun out of today's lesson. Again, we're trying to learn, expand, uh, we're trying to learn, expand, and ex uh, explore new avenues every day that we're trying to make something fresh. So I hope that you guys got something fun out of that class, the same as me and my students, because hey, we're having fun. Homework time for, for you guys now. Don't forget to take care of the basics, which is like, subscribe, share, and all the various platforms. Trying to get that message out there to as many teachers and students as possibly can. Educate the masses. It's always better. Don't forget, if during today's class, you guys had a question, comment, or concern, raise those hands in the comments below. Happy to answer the questions from my classmates. Other than that, I'm gonna go finish this up. I gotta, I gotta smooth out a couple more pieces. I, work fast but it's a nice one day project if you have a long class period uh but with that i will see you guys next class so until then later guys i came up with this project of and i'll tell you now up front i steal a lot of my project ideas off of pinterest facebook instagram if i see a cool idea um i will try and tag whoever artists created it first <laughs>